Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign as Great Britain with that fellow Philly robot. How's it going, Philly? Doing well. Good deal. Yeah. So we were in line to get a union over Sweden, but he had a baby. The baby's name is Johan. Johan the baby. We don't Johan like Stenbach. Oh, they did not like us landing. They ran all away from uh, Calais. Yeah, now you're done with that. I was going to point a leader. Uh, let's point a leader real quick. Two seconds. No leader. I want a leader. Yeah, you can have the one that I just unappointed. Which one is that? They all say assigned to me. Reopen the interface. Okay. Got it. Edgar Beresford. By okay. the way, quick shortcut using the keyboard shortcuts mod, which you do have installed, is N to appoint leader. N, if you have the leader screen appointed, like the, the appoint leader screen open, N will unappoint an existing leader. Hmm. So you can just grab an army that's in neutral territory or friendly territory... NN will very quickly unappoint him, and then you can grab the army that you want, press N, and then you can click on the leader. Very, Why very... is our 114 boats not engaging that one boat that's sieging us? 114 In... boats. Oh, 25 of them are ours. Okay, so... in That Ka... boat is in the port of Ka. Ka. It is not Ka. in the sea tile. I thought we own this. This fucking colors are getting confusing. This is no. red on red. Yeah, that's why we need to kill England. No, well, they have play too. If if you were to siege oh. down Ka, then we would be able yeah, to push it out, right? But I thought we owned it because it's the exact same fucking color of our country, and it's right next to it, and it's depressing. <laughs> all right, um, I guess what I want to do then is I want to split up this army because I don't really want all of them to go there. Okay. So we don't own Calais right now. Nope, you're gonna have to siege that back. Oh, that's right. You do that. Gonna be a little careful because they have. Uh, 16k guys running around right next to us. Just one second. Moving some ships around. So yeah, it's 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 been very fun for me the last few weeks. How many questions you always end up with on uh, Skype these days? Yeah, you're uh, you seem to Learn have caught it. you've caught the E4 bug. Don't I'm enjoying to... it immensely right now. So uh, yes, I probably have caught the E4 bug. Hey, that boat's fleeing. You're missing out on like half a war score. It'd be huge. Actually, boat. it's probably not worth anything, but. Right, I'm sieging with all my guys, so I take maximum attrition. Oh, Good job. Yep. I could split it up, I suppose. What type of fort is it? Uh, level 2, so I need 7. England's wanting to peace out. We have positive 12 war score right now, even though they have the war goal. Okay. Which is kind Let's of funny. Let's get the war score back and then get a proper peace. Yeah. All right. Yeah. In I'm, respect for your desire not to lose troops uselessly, I've moved some of my split my troops up a little bit near the war goal. And I see you don't have any cannons. That's unfortunate. They they broke the siege of Holland, so that's a good sign. Yeah. If we can take Utrecht, I honestly wouldn't mind taking Utrecht in the peace deal as well. That's yeah. twenty development in our node, but that would be. What is this? Uh, what is this enormous flag next to the guys? Walking through French's French's territory, the French territory doing. That's gone now. Uh, they're trying to sneak up on Ka. Looks like that may be a Condottieri army. Uh, that, that's what causes them to have that extra flag. Okay. Gonna pop up. Let me just quickly read through this. Uh, secrets in the land. Ambassadors and diplomatic envoys often double as spies. Blah blah blah. Ambassador of London has been suspected of an involvement in espionage to challenge now lies and tactically handling this discovery. This is with Sweden. 50% uh, chance of Sweden adding 10 to their spy network in Great Britain seems totally fine to me. Yep, we don't care. They're our ally. I've never understood that event because who gives a shit? Honestly. Oh no, yeah. my ally has spy strength against me. What? They're not going to use it. 
They're not going to attack us. It's a weird event. I don't understand it. All right, they're uh, sieging Kaw down again. I'm a little bit worried about this because um, I can I can see an 11 stack and a 13 stack all in range of uh, Calais. There goes Talbot. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. That was What's our that? siege. Our siege leader just died. All. So. Okay. Well, Sorry. well, I need more army over here. So whether you need to get your butt down here or I need to leave this siege that we're successfully sieging soon. So if you look. I can see 24, 32k of army over here. Okay. Great. All right. All right. I'll come. One second. Utrick should fall soon. Yeah, I'd really like to get this siege down too. We're actually making some progress. Oh, they're not coming this way though. Why the fuck not? Why would they not relieve the siege goal? Because they're dumb. Clearly. Yeah. Okay, well, good then for now. Alright, 21 in the front versus 28 in the front. Man, that is a big freaking army, isn't it? The 31k uh, Scottish nobles? Yeah. Yep. Quite large. We know how it goes. You're also fighting outnumbered. In, uh, yeah. yeah. Trying to take the, the defensive advantage. They they reinforced far too many, so... That army's going to retreat. That army's now yours. Enjoy! <laughs> okay. But we did get the, uh, the occupation of Bremen done and the occupation of Utrecht done. We have positive 22 war score. If you can get the war goal back, I yeah, think we're... we're pretty we're, good chances right now. We can peace out and get what we want. Yeah, got it. All right. So that's 55 war score. I think what we're looking at then is probably, let's first clear the offer, go for our claim, which is obviously Calais, and then we're going to take Bremen because, oh, 79 war score. He's not a co-belligerent. That's stupid expensive. Damn. But we can take Utrecht, which is also within the Empire. All right. It's not an estuary, but it is in our capital node. It's worth... 1.6% of trade power in the English Channel, so yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be happy with that. It's gonna piss off um, everyone, of course. The aggressive expansions—it's just astronomical. Okay. Well, maybe we shouldn't do this. <laughs> please, Arumba. Please. I, I think we should. We have we have a policy, and our policy is we take from everyone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we can't I, go back on that now. No. Can't be. I I really think we shouldn't. <laughs> I think that you shouldn't. What is this? So, I mean, I guess. I mean, you have shown me coalition wars. I, I am willing I'm willing to say that you have done a very good job of showing me how nasty coalition wars can be, and I think that would be a pretty good learning experience, and that we can reduce that by not doing overexpansion. However, we could do something more interesting, which is we could just take some ideas that reduce overexpansion and keep taking all the land. The problem like, is uh, it, it, that it doesn't retroactively fix the problem. We're still ah. going to constantly be in a state of coalitions, which is just... It's, it's not that it's not manageable, it's just that it, it does two it's a things. a lot of work. It slows the shit down, too. It slows things down. It makes us play on much slower game speed because we have to manage things more carefully. And more importantly, this was intentionally... In, inten, in, originally intended to be a tutorial series. This is not at all how new players should play. You should not play constantly facing coalitions. It's, it's, it's not smart. So... Gotcha. So what you're telling me is that you want to chicken out... And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's stuff. totally, yeah, I'll let you make fun of me, that's fine, that's what I'm wanting to do. So, okay. <laughs> I'm looking at a much simpler, much more reasonable peace deal where we take Calais, we take 64 ducats off them, we make them end their rivalries so that we get more prestige, and that's it. It's 72% peace deal, which is going to give us a 12-year uh, a truce, it's only 13 aggressive expansion, which is basically nothing, compared to like 70 aggressive expansion if we take one of those other provinces. Getting any uh, the connection issues on your side? Your volume was really weird for me. Like I was losing some of my clarity with you during that little speech. Uh, no, I don't think so. Let me just check, make sure my Skype shows us doing normal stuff for me. So it's a little bit weird. 
getting that little notification from Skype that says uh, losing the call or whatever it is. Skype's crazy. Don't trust Skype. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Voting views, Skype and tooltips are the two things to be most distrusted in this world. All right, so we have uh, picked up, I don't know if we have it or not, it's red. So is it ours? Yes, owned by Great Britain. We have a Ford over there too, which is good. Yes. I actually don't really like the forts in the mainland like this. I mean, I, I suppose it would be helpful if we took a little bit more land around it, but right now it's just such a pain in the ass that it always feels like the forts get sieged down and then we have to re-siege them. It's annoying. Yeah. Forts are good, but sometimes they're not good. Oh shit, just moved the wrong way to do. I do hate how when I have an army selected, I can't do diplomatic interactions by right-clicking. Yep. That takes some getting used to. Benjamin Button just rolled a 14. Holy crap. I'm fighting over there? I didn't even notice. Okay. Hey, you're crushing them. You gotta admit, a 14 is pretty damn impressive. Yep. And then 13 right at the end there. Yeah, Button's been doing well. He's no Wallace, but he's been doing pretty damn well. I want to fabricate. Getting our provinces back. Yep. Everything's we? uh we're, we're not at war at all anymore right now, right? No, no, we're actually at peace. So I know. You, uh, it's weird, isn't it? Doing some cores, it is weird. I'm gonna core Calais. Uh let's take a look at the missionary. Anything we want there? No. We don't have shit for religious strength. Missions. We should recover from wars. Let me read these missions real quick, sorry. Uh war exhaustion less than one, and we gain national unrest and med cover. Yeah, let's take that. We need to recover from wars. Yes, I like that mission. It's an easy one to accomplish. Yep, and it, pretty good results. Less rebels, or like, rebels slower. What's our war exhaustion at? 6.57. It's quite a lot. Okay, are we ahead of time on Diplotech? Yes, we are. Sure. Therefore, it's it down. very, very justifiable. I wouldn't buy it down all the way, but I'd probably buy it down twice at least. Yeah. Maybe a third time if you want to be really aggressive about getting another mission in six months versus in 26 months. Yes. So then, yeah. Actually, it's going to be right away. I thought you had to get all the way down to zero, but you had to get down below one. So that's great. So we just get national manpower, recovery speed, that's great. And now we get a new mission right away. Uh, remove Bremen, conquer Kohlberg. I don't know where these are. And rely on trade and missions. Mm. Kohlberg is Pomerania. Pomerania is a prince. Attacking a prince brings on the ire of the emperor. Uh, congratulations. We just gained one stability loss. <laughs> Why? Why do you say it this way? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go buy that back up. Congratulations, we just gained one stability loss. <laughs> For uh, maximum communication purposes. Alright, what else do we have going on? Maximum misleading purposes is more like it. That's right. We are on the same team, but one of us wishes us to win and one of us doesn't. Alright, so uh, loans, that is the big thing. I've yes. I've gotten rid of pretty much all of our mercs, by the way, I don't know if you saw that, but we, we yeah. have no more mercenaries because we don't need them at the moment. And because okay. they are they are expensive, even when you have a lot of money, you don't want mercs. Like, we're making 20 yeah. ducats a month again. Uh, unrest is below 80%, so no one's about to fire, so I would consider going down to like 40% maintenance. Not Why 40% as opposed to 100%? Because if rebels come up or if we get declared upon, I would like to be able to get maintenance all the way back up to 100% morale within about two months versus four months. Like, okay. we have this huge coalition. If we didn't have the threat of the coalition, I'd go down to 0%. Would but, you train? Got it. Understood. It's basically reactive, being quicker to react. Would you train right, uh, trade right now one base tax lost in Sutherland for 15 uh, loyalty for the nobility? Or would you like to lose another 15 lo loyalty from the nobility? One base tax in Sutherland. Yep. Does it matter where it is? I mean, it doesn't really matter where it is. It it can. It depends on the autonomy of the province, whether it's a state or not. Um, stuff yeah, like, true. Stuff like, like that. But Sutherland's going to be probably one of our older ones, right? Actually, let's go find it. It's... I am... I'm just looking. We can't call it... The problem is, I don't know what we can do about that amount of loyalty loss. We're going to have the nobility hating us forever if we do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the options are lose one one base tax, gain loyalty? Yep. Or okay. lose loyalty. Just I think take we're losing it. the one. Yep. Just take it. It's fine. I, I hate to give them to lose base tax because it is the most valuable type of development, but... Yeah, I agree. 
Okay. Ah, interesting. Uh, Brandenburg would hire our troops. Can we afford to do that? How long do we have on truce timers? I mean, that one coalition, they haven't joined another coalition though, right? We haven't seen that pop out. No, and we actually had a lot of people truce out. Let's take the let's take a look at the coalition map mode again. Yeah, so it's just looking for, what's the hockey, you? Yes. Okay. Many nations are actually getting quite a bit lower. We've still got above, above 50 with many, but like Brunswick, I'm noticing, is at 54, which means that they're about to, to stop being within range. Yeah. We still have a so lot of England and Austria right now. Burgundy, Burgundy was not in the last war, or was Burgundy they was, might have. They were not. They granted military access, but they were not involved. We have we actually have a truce with Burgundy right now. Okay, so yeah, let's do it. Let's rent out our troops. Uh, we have about forty years in the one, and the other one's not res. So the two of these, the two uprisings at fifty percent, are not actually moving forward very rapidly at all. So we don't have to worry about uprisings for a little bit at least. I think it makes sense. Let's wait till January the 1st at the least because I already sent our diplomat away. Okay. And it's an annual tick, so... The annual tick's the most important for improved relations because if you have a diplomat improving relations, you don't get the negative tick of lost relations. Okay. So not only do you gain the plus whatever, but you don't lose, so it's like a double gain. So now we have them free. Let's consider... The problem is Brandenburg's really stupid small. They don't have any money. Brandenburg, Anhalt, and Württemberg. Let's see. Who will give us the most? <laughs> that is how we will determine it. Okay. Okay. Um... They would totally take it. Th these guys don't have enough money. So Anhalt, maybe? Do they have enough money? The problem is that it's just a bunch of little one province miners over here. They don't They don't have the money. Wait a second. Why does Brandenburg want Condottieri? They're not even They are in a war. They're in a war with Muscovy. What the hell? On Holt makes 1.77, Brandenburg makes 2.44, and the other one was Württemberg. Yep. 2.29. Okay, so Brandenburg makes the most money. Is not much, but it's better than us paying for it, so sure. Alright. Can you not do it to all three of them? You could. That would require splitting the army up into small little parts that are more likely Easily to get... crushable. Yeah, killed. I, I, when I do conduct here, I usually like to just lend out one sizable force that's capable of sieging and defending itself. Yep. And at least being useful. So yeah, uh, we could convert stuff. We need to pay off our loans. Right now, I've got us on stability. I looked at the conversion stuff. None of it looked very good. Yep. We do have a good. decision we could take. Oh, I haven't looked at those in a while. Let's go take a look at those. The Conventicle Act, if we want to lower... Now that we've converted most of our country to the right religion, we could lower our tolerance of heretics by one in order to make us better at converting everyone. I think that's not bad. Yeah, when we were first converting and we had like zero or like 10% religious unity, that would have been stupid because everyone would have been the wrong religion and that's just raising unrest in your entire country by one. Yeah. Now we have, what is it, 91% religious unity? So yeah, I'd say it's probably a good idea. And now that brings things down. A courier or whatever is 59 months. It's not too bad. Really? Because it kind of feels pretty bad. It feels 59 months for 0.1% unity. It yeah. Kind of bad. Yeah, but... But it is stronger, that's true. It was, it's better than it was. You're welcome to send it there. We pay for a missionary when he's out there, right? Yeah, I mean, I would hold off still for now, but... Okay. You uh, changed our focus to stability? It's been on stability for a couple months, yeah. Just just while we were stabilizing, while we... Since you bought down all the over um, the war exhaustion, though, I think that we should move off that. Okay. And go back to trade focus. Yeah, I think trade would be good. So what are our major expenses right now? Army maintenance is one of them. Fort maintenance. Do we know our forts on? 
We do. Why? Well, we, we have them on. Do we need them on? Not necessarily. Did you want to ever Especially. get the 40 army tradition? Oh, right, right. I did want to get the 40 army tradition. I forgot about I mean, that element of it. Okay. We, we do have a lot of debt, though. So right now it could be an argument to turn off the forts on our island, for example. Yep, I'm at least looking at Lothian and uh, Pale and probably Marches. I could see leaving London on. You don't really need to keep London on, though, because it's got a capital fort, so it automatically always has 1,000 garrison. You can always turn it on the second you need it. Oh, well. I wanted to ask a question about building forts. So I built a fort, and it built a castle. And I wanted to build a level 1 fort, and a castle's level 2. How do I build a level 1 fort? Well, when you open up the pop out the build menu, yeah, there's a list of the four. Castle is a level 1 fort. Oh, I see. Bastion okay. is level 2, Star Fort's level 3. Why does it have 2 next to the castle then? It says fort level plus 2. Because it provides 2 fort level. Yeah, Capital level 1 forts only provide 1 fort level. No, capital fort provides one fort level. Level ah. one forts provide two. Level two forts provide four. Don't ask Got me it. why, it's paradox. <laughs> it would make too much sense for a level one fort to cause plus it one. Is a, it is a good name if you wanted to not justify actions. <laughs> yeah, paradox Interactive. <laughs> That's right. Uh, paradox. paradox. An, an enigma wrapped inside a paradox, inside a uh, whatever. I'm repaying our loan because I don't want to get crushed in this one like I always get crushed in my other ones. Oh no, I almost took out another loan. <laughs> right. Yeah, that would have been wrong. You would have been wrong to do so. Mm -hmm. Peasants are getting uppity. Really? You have another yep. pop-up? Yep. Uh, nobility state loses 10 loyalty, that's fine, and we lose 10 legitimacy. I think that's better than losing 35 admin and burger loyalty. But maybe not. Burgers are at 50 right now, so it would trend up nicely, but neither of them are... Nobility are over 50. Nope. I'm losing legitimacy. Decision made. Today will be the great decider, at least for the remainder of this episode, of which there are only moments left. Oh, and another pop up. <laughs> you're getting a lot add of them. Add size minus 25 to the spy network in Great Britain. That's good. I guess, if anyone cares. What are we doing on missions? Pretty shitty. Spent all that money to get this unrest down, and now we have no missions that matter. Yep, that's unfortunate. Remove Utrecht from the map. That's another prince. That's the one we yeah. were considering taking land from. Great advisor ripped. We should go fix that. This uh, is, this would be a situation where I would go down to a level one advisor. Because of cash. Okay. Yes. Yep. Even though improve relations. Reputation. Yeah, who cares about the bank reputation? We're not we're not trying to do anything important. The improved relations guy is the best out of out of the options presented. I think I just took a different one. Okay, he was he. You took the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> improved relations. It's misleading. It used to I say morale of navies. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you did that, but <laughs> I didn't it, see another level one one there. I just saw two level. Was, do we have five? And I like didn't scroll down or something. Yes, because we yeah, have okay. because we have uh some something gives us an extra number of possible advisors. It's uh, administrative ideas, possible advisors plus one. I am yeah. jealous of this income we have, and compared to my other game. I just took the improve relations guy. The reason why improve relations guy is misleading is that it says improve relations, which makes you think it's about improving relations with people, but it's also better that relations would, over that time. That would be sensical. So basically, it's plus twenty percent recover. Oh, Benjamin Button just died. It's a twenty percent better recovery of aggressive expansion, which is stupid, stupid good for us right now. Yeah, yeah, I understood. You've seen that in another one, but uh, I just didn't see him when I was looking through the list. I didn't see yeah, that. I can scroll yeah. down. I turned off some, but not all of our forts. I'm going to go back to turning off the rest of our forts. Okay, I'm okay with that. Just troll a little bit. I'm only going to turn off forts that you need, though, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one active. Which one is it? Do we have one active? We do. It's the oh, one in it's Holland. In, uh, Holland. Yeah, I got it. I know there's a button that lets me do them all. I should have just clicked that button, but I wasn't initially sure I was going to do them all. And then, all right. you, then you decided that it was a good idea. Well, I decided I wanted money. Just seeing this huge green number is so nice compared to seeing this small red number that gets bigger every month. Yeah, we're making sick trade income. You're not worried about inflation? I guess our inflation's trending down. As long as inflation's below five, I don't care at all. Five is mm. the threshold. Anything of above what? five, bad events can happen at five. There's one called financial ruin, which gives you like plus five more inflation and like negative stability. 
Um, if you're above 10 inflation, some seriously bad stuff can happen. But below 5, there's no negative events. Would you ever recommend debasing my currency to pay back loans to avoid bankruptcy? Almost never. I think that the debase currency button was ill thought out and not very good. Because if you do the math on it, you never come out ahead versus paying off your corruption. And if you take it, you're automatically at two corruption. In order to get any of the positive corruption events, you have to be below one. So you debase currency even just one time, and now you've completely locked yourself out from any positive corruption based events. So it's just never worth it. I would much rather have the chance for the event called Rigorous Researchers, which gives you plus 40 to all Monarch points. Yeah. I That's that way, recently. way, way too valuable for me compared to, oh, I get some free money, kind of, except not really, because it costs me more to, to bring it down. Even if you were ahead of time on every single tech, like we yeah, are right now, and it's trending down automatically, it's still not worth it, because it's going to take you six months to a couple of years to get below one. Well... Possibly, but what it lets you do that you can't do in any other way is it lets you immediately deal with debt, right? Because you're you're generating gold out of nowhere, essentially. So yes, the long term, in the long term, it's worse for you in terms of not getting uh, these positive events and triggering negative events. But it may be one way that you can actually stop debt from becoming overwhelming. Because right now I'm gonna I'm gonna spiral in one of my campaign my my career campaign where I am in a debt spiral, and if I would. If I had thought to do that earlier, I might have been able to break that debt spiral. Because right now, the biggest cost in my entire campaign is the debt interest. So if I could get out from under that, I might be able to stabilize the rest of it. Okay, but let me ask you a very, very simple question. What's more important, money or monarch points? Well, in general, I would say monarch points. Okay. The problem with corruption, which is what you get from debasing currency, is that 100% direct correlation increases all monarch point costs. Mm. So all of your tech... Every button you click related to monarch points goes up relative to corruption. So you would if, argue then to take bankruptcy over clicking the base currency. Yes. Despite the fact you lose a hundred percent of your monarch points when you take bankruptcy. I mean, you well, can spend them. But you, you spend gone. them. You you lose zero percent of your monarch points because you're not an idiot and you spend them all. You spend yeah, them all, you, every single one, on development no, before no, you take no, bankruptcy. What you just that, that's that's not quite that doesn't quite work because what you've done is you've said that monarch points being invested in any direction are equal. And they're not. So having like putting monarch points into development, which you consider to be a suboptimal play, is not the same as having monarch points to spend on like technology, for example, right? But if your options are lose all your monarch points for no benefit or spend them on development so that you have the development in the future, it's a pretty easy decision. Sure, if that is the decision, but that isn't the decision. The decision is to have increased cost of using your monarch points via corruption, so your monarch points are slightly devalued, or to lose all of your or to have to invest all of your monarch points into development because you're going to go for bankruptcy. Okay, bankruptcy is bad. Don't do bankruptcy if you don't have to. But if it's already likely to happen, I still would make the argument that you are just better off. I've done it. I've done it in a very recent campaign, in fact, where I played as Tunis. 10 years of bankruptcy is nothing in the scheme of 377 years of gameplay. Okay. Just, like you just take I, the I, bankruptcy, just... be, get through it, get done with it. Make sure you get your allies before you do the bankruptcy. And then if anyone attacks you, your army is completely useless, but their armies aren't, and your allies will protect you. And if you don't have any allies... Well, then you suck, and you gotta get, get better at the game. Get good. <laughs> My big ally is the one about to attack me. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> probably, need this, probably need to end this part here, huh? Yeah, we do. Alright, see you guys soon. Thanks see you for bit. watching.